We'll start by learning how to draw a wheel for our robot. We're going to start by creating a opening inventor and creating a new file. And we will choose standard IPT. This is the default IPT window that opens when creating a drawing. It automatically opens in a sketch mode to start drawing using the drawing tools with the other toolbars, toolbars available. We can see in the origin by clicking on the plus symbol to expand it to see multiple drawing planes and if I roll over them it highlights the drawing plane which we'll use later. We're going to start by drawing a CD wheel that looks something like the CD seen here. We'll start by drawing the outside diameter measured from the CD wheel. Now depending on if you're drawing in inches or in metric we need to switch those units. It usually defaults to inches. To switch to metric we need to go to tools, document settings, units, and change it to which units you're going to use. We'll use centimeters. Apply and close. So now I can go back to my sketch tools up here and choose a circle. You always want to start drawing from the center of your screen because that helps later on in the drawing and it pins the drawing to a certain spot on your screen. So I can just draw a circle and I can see how many centimeters by my grid system here, so one, two, three, four. I know my CD is approximately 12 centimeters in diameter, so I can draw it larger than need be. And then use the dimension tool, so click, click on the outside diameter, and drag, and the box will automatically open up. We want to say 12 and since we automatically chose centimeters as our units, we don't need to do anything else. But if you didn't choose centimeters as your units, you could say 12 cm and hit enter, and it'll automatically resize it for you. Now notice, it got bigger than what was available on the screen. You can either zoom out by using the wheel, rolling it up or down, or if you double click the wheel, much like you would a button, it'll automatically zoom out for you. So we have our outside diameter and now we can create the inside diameter of the hub. The hub is about 13 millimeters. So once again I'll click circle and start in the center. And draw out and then dimension. And again it's in centimeters. And so I'll change that to 13. And at this time, if I'd like, I can say mm for millimeters. And it'll automatically adjust the unit. Now, instead of cre creating a CD wheel, you could create a foam wheel by changing your diameter dimension or in and internal dimension to make it look more appropriate. So now I'm pretty much done my, the, what the wheel looks like. So I can say finish sketch. And now I want to extrude it or give it thickness. Extrude is here. And so I can click extrude. Select the area I want to extrude by clicking inside the shape. And then I want to give it a distance. Well, I definitely don't want it a depth of one centimeter. I want approximately one millimeter. So I can do one mm again. And you've got a few options here. We can expand forward, expand backward, or expand center. I like to expand center because it allows me to go back and use the original drawing plane later for another operation. So I'll click the third button here and OK. Now if I'd like to see what I drew, I can go up and grab the cube here and just click and hold. And as you do that, you can rotate the cube in any direction to see multiple surfaces of the CD.
again, if you're making a foam wheel instead of a CD wheel, you could change the, the distance in which you extrude the part. For example, if we were to go 10 millimeters, it would increase the thickness of the wheel to something more like the foam wheel. You could also put in standard measurements here as something like 3 fourths of an inch to match the foam wheel. But I don't want to do that, so I'll undo that. Now I can add some detail to my wheel. For instance, most wheels we created would have to be attached by use of servo parts. So I'll go ahead and add a servo part to the wheel. To do that, I want to create a sketch on a surface. So I need to click on that surface here, and then I can right click and say New Sketch. This allows me to create a new piece of paper on that surface to draw from. And now if I'd like to see it looking straight on, I can then click my cube whichever window shows up and if you'd like to orient it correctly you can click the arrows to rotate it if need be. And I'll start by drawing a CD piece or one of the, the... now I need to draw a servo piece that would attach to the wheel to help it hold onto the axle. One of these is seen in the picture is most likely which I'll end up drawing. I'll draw the one that looks like the four piece based on the measurements. I've already measured it and I know it's 40 millimeters long, and the circles at the end are approximately 4 millimeters in diameter. So I'll start by drawing the circles for the servo part, and I'm just going to draw them directly above the center. I can just draw four circles. directly in line with all the axes. If you're doing six, you could do something similar but space them out equally. Now I can dimension them because I said they're four millimeters in diameter. And so I can say four millimeters or 0.4 centimeters. And since they are all equal, I can learn how to use my constraint buttons here. This constraint is the equal constraint. It allows me to match items. So if I click equal, click the constraint I want, and the constraint I want to copy it to, I just double click and it snaps it. Now I can continue that all the way around my shape. So click to save, double click to enact. Click, double click, and now they're all equal in size. The benefit of this is if I go to make adjustments, I can change this one number, and if I made it 0.6, it automatically adjust all of them, which could be useful later. I'll undo that correction. Now I need them equal spaced. So to do that, I can dimension the distance from the center of each circle. Originally I said the entire length from outside to outside was 40, 40 millimeters. But I can also take into account the two millimeters of radius on each side of the circle. It allows me to do that by saying 40 millimeters minus two millimeters for the top minus two millimeters for the bottom circle, or 36, or 3.6 centimeters. I can do the same thing for the other two circles. Dimension click the outside of both circles, drag up or down. And now if I want to steal a previously made dimension, I can double click that dimension and it says D5, so it knows I'm stealing dimension 5 and placing it in the dimension 6 box. I can click OK. Now I want to make sure the circles are equally spaced from the center. I could do this a number of ways. I'll do it two different ways to show you two methods. So I can dimension from the center of my circle to the center to the edge of another circle or center and give it the dimension. And once again, I can steal the original dimension and do 
a fraction of that or divided by 2 to make it half the distance. Now I know if this distance changes, as will that and vice versa. So you could do the other one that way, or you could draw a line, click line, and we can make a construction line here, which allows us to draw a dotted line that can't be used in extrusions, but can be referenced. So I can make a construction line, and then I can use coincident. And line the, if I zoom in, I can find the midpoint of my construction line, which is here, and make it coincident to the midpoint of my center circle by clicking on that as well. And that snaps the center of the construction line to the center of the circle. Either way is, is feasible. Now going back and looking at my servo part, I know the outside circle that surrounds the inside hub is approximately 1.2 centimeters. So I'll draw that next to create the outside back portion of the servo part. To do that, I'm going to draw a circle at the same location of the center point. Oops, I made a mistake. I need to go back and rem remember to turn off my construction lines. So you can do that by turning off construction lines, or you can click your object, unclick the construction line box, and that sets it back to regular. So now I wanted to mention this to 1.2 centimeters. And now I'm going to connect the outside circles to my inside circle through the use of tangent lines. So I'm going to click line click on the outside circle, making sure not to click on the top, bottom, right, or left quadrant. A quadrant is the very top or bottom or outside portions of a circle. I want to click somewhere in between the two quadrants on both circles, and it helps to zoom in. So I want it to go somewhere around here, to somewhere here. Notice neither side is tangent. Oh, I forgot to again turn off my centerline circle. Let me make sure I go back and fix that. Now that I click line again, I need to make sure I uncheck center or construction line to turn that option off. So once again, tangent line on the surface of the circle to the other part of the circle. And what this allows me to do is now I can use the tangent feature by clicking that and clicking two objects to make them tangent. So I can click my line and my circle, and it makes the two parts tangent. I'll do the other side of the line and the circle to make them tangent. Notice that how it turns black. When lines turns black, it means they're, they're dimensioned correctly and cannot be positioned, repositioned or moved. Down here, you always have a register of how many dimensions your, the computer feels your drawing is needed before it, can be, it can't be messed up. Now, this is not always perfectly accurate, but it's a good idea to go by to know what you're doing wrong. So again, tangent, click, line, click, circle, and it automatically makes it tangent, line, to circle tangent. Now I'll do the other parts. So connect the line to two parts of the circle. And you can continue doing this. Line, tangent, line, circle. Notice how it moved. I'll fix it in a minute. Tangent, line, circle. Click the line, tangent to the circle, line, tangent to circle. And notice how it set it in black, so it's now concrete and set in stone, and can no longer be moved. Once things are set in black, they cannot be drug anywhere. Like, for example, this circle can still be moved out of, out of location, which could mess your drawing up. But once we set it correctly in place, it will no longer do that. A way to fix that, if using the tangent option does not fix it, you could draw a line and set that line to vertical. So I click line, I want to make a line tangent to my two circles again. There is a faster way to do this, but we're not going to do that yet. I'll go ahead and do the next circle. Making sure never to click on the quadrant 
when attaching a line. Tangent button, line circle, tangent line to circle, tangent line to circle, tangent line to circle. And I will continue to do this till I have all my points mapped out. Notice how it turned black again. So I know it's locked in place. Now you could go ahead and extrude these portions of the shape so that it has the thickness to the arms of the servo part. But I'm going to add a little bit more detail to my servo part to make it look more realistic. I know it has a center hole to the center, approximately one eighth in diameter. So I can draw my center dimension. And instead of dimensioning centimeters, I can do it in inches. So 1 eighth in inches is 0.125. And if I want to use inches, I use parentheses. And instead, I need to say inch with this version of Inventor. And it automatically calculates what that conversion would be to inches or centimeters. I also know that there's small circles at each of the ends. Now I'm going to do one arm and then rotate it around to duplicate to show you how to use another tool. I know that each circle is approximately one millimeter in diameter, so I'll go ahead and dimension it. And they're approximately three millimeters apart. So I'll go ahead and put another few on the line. Making Notice I'll make sure not to attach it to where two lines intersect. I'll put it farther out than necessary on purpose, and then it'll readjust it correctly. So one circle, two circle, three circles. And once again, I can use the equal to make them all equal to the other circle I already drew. So click the circle you that you the dimension you want, click the circle you want to apply it to, and now they're all equal. Then I can dimension their distance by clicking on the two circles, dragging up, and setting that to three millimeters or 0.3 centimeters. And I can repeat the dimension to the next one. And notice how it put the two on top of each other. If that causes you a problem, the green one, you can still select the green center point and actually drag further out of the way to put it in a better position to dimension it. So and then I go back and click dimension, click the two centers. And once again, if I want to, I can double click a previous dimension to steal it and I'll automatically set it to that dimension. That way, if I adjust one, it adjusts them all. So now I have more circles to add a little bit more detail to my servo part. I can now copy those around so that I don't have to redraw that whole process. To do that, I can do a circular pattern. So I'm going to click the circular pattern button here. Notice the red arrow. The red arrow signifies it wants you to select the geometry. So I'm going to select my four circles. One, two, three, four. And then it wants you to select an axis because the red arrow now moved. I need to click that arrow to say that's what I want to select. And I want to select the center point of my circle. Notice that when I clicked it, it automatically assumed I wanted 6. So I need to go change that to 4. And then if you need to, you can change the number of degrees within that rotation. If you wanted 4, say, within 90 degrees, you could do that and allow it to only array a certain amount. We want 360. And so I say apply, and it automatically puts them in the correct location. Now I should be able to extrude this to get my servo part looking fairly accurate. So I can finish my sketch, extrude. 
I might need to click on more than one operation to do this. And you might need to actually click more than one extrusion, but we'll try it for now. The thickness of this is approximately 1.2 millimeters. I can then click OK, but first I want to make sure I'm going in the correct direction. I don't want to split the dimension or the extrusion this time because I don't want to go back into the CD surface. So I'm going to rotate my cube up a little bit to see that I'm extruding in the correct direction. Remember, I rotated the cube by clicking on a corner, holding down the regular mouse button, and just dragging. I can then say 1.2 and click OK. Notice I missed something. I forgot to do the inside portion as well. If I ever forget something and need to go back and change an extrusion, I can do that by right-clicking on the extrusion in the menu and editing the feature. And if I need to add more to the profile, I can click the profile button and then click that inner portion to include that in the profile. Then I can click OK. To to remove portions out of the profile is substantially more difficult, but we won't worry about that right now. Now I need to add the circular hub that sticks off of this that the servo attaches to. So I can right click on the surface again and create a new sketch. And I can click the portion of the cube that allows it to sit normal to the screen to allow drawing me my next circles. So I'll have two circles here, one inside diameter and one outside diameter. Now I know the difference between the two circles is approximately one millimeter. So I can then dimension that by clicking on one circle and clicking on the other circle with the dimension button. And notice, oops, let me do that again since I lost my circle. I click on the two circles and then drag out. Now be careful as you're dragging not to select items that are hiding in the background. That's what happened before and that's why I lost my dimension. So I'll go farther out so I know I'm not going to click on anything on accident. So I know the difference here is one millimeter. By doing it this way then I only need to dimension one distance. So I know the thickness of my piece which is good and then the inside dimension of the servo hub I can just dimension that circle. I'll put the dimension farther out so I don't click on anything on accident. It's approximately six, six millimeters. Then I can extrude that again. So finish sketch, extrude. I'll click on the portion I want to extrude, just the inside hub. If you click on the wrong portion, you can just cancel and click the tool again. So once again, I'm going to click and rotate my cube a little bit to see that I'm extruding in the correct direction. And this distance is approximately 4 millimeters. And I want to make sure to go up and not down. That would make it go into the object. I don't want to do that. I want to go up. So I can play it. OK. And now I have my servo piece attached to my wheel, my CD wheel. And if you ever zoom in and out and you can't find your object, you can always double click your wheel to bring it back into location and if you want to drag it closer across your screen if you click and hold down the wheel on the mouse it pans the object. Now that I have some detail done on my wheel I want to make sure I save it. So I'm going to file save as and give it a name. I'll call this one CD wheel part one. Make sure you know where to save it to either on a folder on your flash drive or on near my documents. And since I already have it saved from prior times, I don't need to save it at the moment. I can just do File Save, and it'll save where I was at the current time. Make sure to save often, because Inventor uses a lot of memory and may quit on you when you're trying to do something complicated. So now that I've added the servo part detail, I want to add some more detail to my wheel. If you'd like, you can go ahead and color your wheel 
by clicking on the surface and going up to as material at the top and changing the color to a new material. The CDs we used were white, so I'll go down and select white. There's regular plastic color spectrums. But if I wanted to, I could change one side and then change the other side. Another way to change the color is to right click on the surface. Properties. And then choose one out of the face color style. So if I wanted to change them a different color, green for example, I would just choose the color and click OK. And I've now changed my part. If you don't want to change a surface, you can change an extrusion as well. For example, if I want to make my servo part black, I can right click on that, go to its properties, and change its feature body color. And I'll set it as black. And I'll need to do both parts of that extrusion. So again, right click on it, properties, feature color style, and then whatever color you want to set to. So up to this point, I could have created two wheels. I could have created the CD wheel, as seen here, or I could have created the foam wheel by modifying a few minor dimensions originally. I could have modified the original dimension of my large circle to so something more along the lines of six centimeters. And I could have modified the size of the extrusion I originally did to something more along the lines of three-fourths of an inch. And notice how I went back and right-clicked on the part I wanted to change, and I can either edit a sketch or a feature. And as long as you only change one dimension of that sketch or feature, it should not have a problem propagating to the part that, have already, that has already been done. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back and change my color of extrusion one to make it match the foam. now I have a pink wheel. Notice this side stayed green because we didn't change the extrusion, we changed the surface color. And it will always hold a surface color unless I change it. Now we're going to add a little more detail to our wheel. I'm going to go ahead and put a rubber band on the wheel by creating a new type of sketch and using the tool called Revolve. If you're using a CD wheel, bear with the video for us few seconds to learn how the revolve tool works and then I'll go back and show you how to do it on a CD wheel as well as on a foam wheel. To do a revolve we have to create a sketch and then wrap it around an axle but before we do that we need to create the axis first so to create a work axis go up here to work features click axis and then you want to put it on the center of any at the center of any cylindrical part of your sketch and since all of them are concentric any cylindrical part I sketch will get the same axis as you can see going through the center of the tube here. So as long as I click a cylindrical part, it creates a work axis which shows up in yellow through my object. And now that I have that work axis, I can create a sketch on a work plane that intersects that axis that I can then wrap around the shape. So I have my work axis here. I need to expand my origin menu here and find a work plane that intersects that. As I can see, the XZ work plane and the XY work plane both intersect that axis. So I can create a sketch on one of those by right-clicking and saying New Sketch. Once I've done that, I can look at my cube and see its orientation and then click a surface to view that sketch head-on. Now I can't see the inside of my part at the moment because I can see my sketch plane, if I rotate slightly, is intersecting through my object. If I want to see the inside of my object where the sketch plane is, much like a piece of paper, 
I can go to view and click slice graphics. And you can see it then cuts it in half. If I want to undo that, I can unslice the graphics by selecting it again. So now if I draw on it, I'll be able to see the internal and external area I'm drawing on. So to create something that looks like a rubber band on this sketch, I'm going to go back to my sketch menu and create a rectangular feature towards the top of my sketch. But I can't seem to click on that part of that sketch because it's, that line doesn't actually exist because I'm cutting through the work plane. So what I need to do first is project geometry of that surface. So if I click project geometry and roll over it, a red line appears and then I can select it. This puts a line that represents the topmost part of that cut surface. Now I can attach a rectangle to it. So I've got the rectangle too. I can just going to kind of draw a random size rectangle. And then I can dimension it by making it a certain height. And our band's about 0 0.05 millimeters, or 0 0.05 centimeters, I mean. And it's about one half an inch wide. Sorry, I forgot to drag that distance over so you could see the dimension box with the previous dimension. So notice again, I'm switching dimension types just to show you how you can use different types of units and not cause a problem. Now notice I've got my rubber band dimension. The problem is, is it's not attached or symmetrical about the center line. So notice I can drag it back and forth. One way to make it symmetrical about the center line is to use another constraint up here. We want the center point of this top surface to be constrained and be vertical above our origin. And so by clicking vertical, I can select not the line, like your vertical constraint. And as you roll over the line, you should be able to find the midpoint, which appears as a green dot. Make sure not to click the line. Click the green dot, and then I can click the, the center or origin dot of my object. Hmm, that didn't seem to allow me to do it. Let's try it the other way. And notice I tried using horizontal this time, and it worked. A lot will depend on the orientation of your cube. Sometimes horizontal will work, and sometimes vertical will work. Now the object is symmetrical. Another way to do that would be to measure the distance from this line to the outside, and then make it some factor divided by the number here. So now that I have my, my sketch, I can revolve, and I have my axis line down here. I can finish my sketch. So again, I'm going to use the revolve tool. And notice how when I clicked it, the profile arrow doesn't show up as red. That's because the sketch we just created is the only available sketch to use at the moment. So Inventor automatically assumes it's the sketch you're going to use to revolve. Had there been something wrong with that sketch, it would not have chosen that sketch. Or if there had been multiple closed shapes, it would have allowed you to click in one of those closed shapes to choose as a revolve. When doing the rubber band on the CD wheel, I'll show you a different example of how that can be done. So my profile was automatically chosen for me, but if it wasn't on yours, you should be able to click inside the rectangle. And then you click our red axis arrow, and then we're going to need to select the axis that runs through our surface or our circle. Once I click that you can see it automatically create a light blue highlight to give you a preview of what it's going to look like when you create the rubber band. So now I can say OK if I like that and I now see I have a different detail on my surface. 
once again, I can right click on that revolution, go to its properties, and change its color style if I choose to, to something like a brown or a different color that you feel is more applicable to your robot wheel. Now we're going to make sure to save. You need to make sure you save often in Inventor because it uses a lot of memory and will tend to quit if the computer doesn't have enough memory. So I'm going to do File Save As and remember the CD wheel name. So I'm going to change this one to Foam Wheel and save. So, we learned how to create a revolve on the foam wheel. Now I'll show you how to do it on the CD wheel. Once again, I need to create an axis through the center of my wheel that I can wrap my sketch around. The axis must be created first before the sketch. So I'm going to click Axis, and I'm going to click on any round or cylindrical part of my shape. Since they are all concentric, they'll all have the same center axis. I notice I clicked on the inside cylindrical part of the servo hub. And now I see a yellow line that represents the axis running through my cylindrical object. Now, remember, I need to create a sketch on a work surface or work plane that intersects that axis. To get to my work planes, I want to go back to my origin, open it up, and I can select different work planes that allow me to see where I can create sketches. I can see the YZ work plane intersects the axis and I'm going to create a sketch on that by right clicking on YZ and saying new sketch. You can see that it created the piece of graph paper through the surface of the wheel because it's now perpendicular to the wheel. Again, remember I can use, go to view in the top menu and slice graphics to cut the surface in half so I can see the internal part of the surface to better create my sketch. I'm now going to click the left side of my box and zoom in to see the top portion of my CD wheel. I'm now going to go back to my sketch tools by clicking on the green sketch icon up top. Now what I need to do is create something that looks similar to a rubber band wrapping around the surface of my CD wheel. But before I can do that, I can see if I roll over the outside lines, red lines appear. So I know the geometry is already projected. But if I roll, roll over the top line, the red line does not appear, so the geometry is not previously projected. So I need to use the Project Geometry button to put that surface onto the current sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and it sets a, pur a purple line that I can graph off of later. I'm going to go ahead and do the outside ones as well just so that they're there and easier to see. Now I'm going to create something that looks like the area a rubber band would take up. The rubber band is going to kind of wrap around the wheel, the outside of the wheel. It's going to cover the top of the wheel. and it's going to cover the side of the wheel again. And I'm drawing it poorly dimensioned on purpose so that I can show you how to set some constraints. And I hit, anytime you want to cancel a command, hit escape. If you hadn't figured that out already. Now my thickness of my rubber band in any one area should be about half a millimeter. So I can dimension that, and I'm going to say point five mm or point zero five centimeters. Now if I want the thickness of this rectangle to match the thickness of this rectangle here, I can set them equal. So click the equal constraint, click the line that you want to borrow the dimension from, and then you can click the other line to match it. Notice how it changed. I can do it again by clicking that same line and clicking the other rectangle with 
and it matches it. Notice how it turned the lines from green to black, showing that the constraints are locked and unable to be changed. And all I've done is create one dimension. If I change that dimension to, say, 0.25 millimeters, I can see it'll automatically update all parts of the sketch. That is one of the benefits of using the constraints instead of dimensioning everything, because the constraints will change with your sketch as your dimension changes, whereas had I dimensioned each rectangle independently, it would not change. So let me set that back to 0.5 millimeters. Now the only thing I can change is the height at which the rubber bands are. Now these don't match. If I want to set the two lines even, I can make them what's called collinear. So if I click collinear, I can click my first line and my second line, and I can see it lines them up. Now if I click hit escape and click and drag one, it keeps them even. If you want to dimension it to be accurate, we can dimension from the top line to the bottom of the rectangle and make it approximately a fourth of an inch or 0.25 inches. If you feel that doesn't look realistic, you can change it. Now that I have my sketch done, I can go back to my home view. And I need the rest of my sketch to show back up so I can finish the sketch and it will show back up, or I could go back to view and unslice the graphics. Zoom in here a little bit. Now I have my sketch profile and my axis. So now I can create Revolve. So I'm going to go to my model toolbar, Revolve, and notice this time it did not choose any one closed shape because it wasn't sure which one to choose to do the Revolve. Well, I want to use all of the closed shapes in the Revolve so I can click each closed shape independently. Once I'm done selecting my closed shapes, I can then click Axis and choose the axis around which I want to wrap the revolve. You can see once I click that, it automatically wraps it around. And I, if I want to set that, I can click OK. If I don't want it to go all the way around, I could set an angle and perhaps do 90 degrees or something like that, depending on what type of revolved objects I was trying to create. And I can go left, right, or centered depending on what I was trying to create. That's obviously unrealistic for a rubber band, so we'll go back and set that to full. I select OK, and you can see I've got the rubber band going around. Now I'll go and change the properties of that to make it look more realistic. So remember I can right click, properties, and then give a different color. I don't know if tan, tan does seem to be available as a color option, so we'll set that for our rubber band. If I want to add a little more detail, like rounding these edges here to make it a little bit so it's not quite such a rectangle, I can do that using the fillet tool. The way the fillet tool works is you select the, the tool, you put in the radius you want, and then you click the surface. Or you can click the fillet tool click the surface you want to fill it. So I'm going to fill up both edges here and I'm going to kind of rotate my object so you can kind of see what it's doing. And you kind of see a, that greenish blue preview option. It's showing you what the fill is going to look like. Now 0.2 centimeters is way too large of a radius. So I'm going to change it to 0.02 and I can see that it just barely curves each corner. Well, 0 0.02 might be a little small. Let's try 0 0.05. That looks a little more realistic in the preview, so I can click Apply. And then if I need to change the color of my fillet, I can once again go to Properties and change its color. Or I could have right-clicked on that particular part of the surface, go to Properties, and change it that way. Remember, I can pan by clicking on my wheel and holding it down and dragging and I can zoom in and out by hopes, rolling up and down the wheel. So now I can see that I've got my CD wheel, 
fairly realistic. I could change colors more if I needed to, but I'm going to go ahead and save. So file, save, and now it saves the CD wheel part one. If you had multiple CD wheels and there are different sizes, you could theoretically at this point go back and change your dimension in sketch one and watch what happens. So I right click on extrude, I open the extrusion, right click on sketch one and say edit sketch. If I adjust this dimension to something slightly smaller, say a half CD that is approximately eight centimeters in diameter, it changes the size of my circle. If I say finish sketch, since I projected the geometry on the uh, re revolution originally, that projected geometry is now constrained to the size change. And when I click finish sketch, it should automatically update. And now I have a much smaller wheel. I could theoretically save as a different CD wheel, perhaps CD wheel part two. by creating multiple different types of CD wheels, I can then assemble my car later with the different wheels on it.